Hello everyone and thanks for hanging out with me. Today I want to go through the very interesting parts of the Volkswagen ID3 manual. A bit of a background. So how Volkswagen does their manual is you do not download a PDF or something. It's not downloadable. It's an online manual and you go to the website user guide Volkswagen in your country code. And, and then you put in a, a VIN number of your car and then you get the serial, uh, the, you get the owner's manual. And a very nice person emailed me uh, a few weeks ago and wanted to send me uh, a VIN number from an ID3, but I didn't get it. <laughs> For some reason I didn't get that email. And then because I didn't react, he sent it to someone else, a, YouTuber, a German YouTuber, and he made a, a video about it. And then this weekend, so a few days ago, he, he told me, hey, I sent it to you and you didn't ever reply. And then I said, I never got it. And then he sent it to me. And so uh, two days ago, I went through the whole uh, manual uh, in a live stream over two hours. I didn't go through all of it, but most of it. So if you want to see most of it, go check that out. Two hours, very long. <laughs> Thanks for the guy, people that were there top-notch but I thought I want to go through the most interesting parts of the manual and before I start this is not a finished manual there's still a lot of things missing there are pictures missing maybe there will be changes to the software that it will look differently and work differently I don't know first in the picture here of the rear view you can see two radar sensors here and it says behind the bumper radar sensors for assist system so when you go out of a parking lot in reverse it will warn you if cars are coming from the side the next thing is the id display this is your instrument cluster and there is a button on the steering wheel where you can go through the f different views and here it's uh, it describes the views so first the summary before activation of the vehicle's drive system display with information on mileage charge level and range Basic, driving dis displays with information on driver assist system, speed and navigation. Then driver assist system, display of active driver assist systems and speed, navigation context hidden. And then navigation, navigation map with route guidance and speed information, driver assist systems hidden. Then you can see your charge level and range in the instrument cluster. The speed here, speedometer, looks very similar to the ID3 that I drove in Dresden of the prototype. So this could stay that way. Very big and it very visible, I like it. And then kilometers, you can see the range and the battery, but it doesn't show percentage of battery above those 8% thing when it's red. Hopefully that changes, I would like to know the percentage all the time in the instrument cluster. The next thing is the power meter. So this is a display that shows you it green if you're regenning energy into the battery or uh, blue is what you're using on power. And then if your <coughs> battery is almost empty or cold or, or too hot, then this white thing will go down so you have less uh, power available for your drive. The head-up display has two areas, so area one will be for your normal thing like speed or navigation or whatever, and number two is only for the augmented uh, reality head-up display so that it uh, shows an arrow to, on the street where you have to go in or a line at the car in front of you for distance. Then there's eco assistance. This has two functions that are very nice. Well, one is uh, could be a bit annoying that it shows you stuff that you <laughs> should do if it knows that there's a turn that you have to take if, you, if you're going to an intersection or if there's a red light or anything, it shows different kinds of warning. But what I like is that the eco assist even in gearbox if you change the gear to d where there should be only coasting with the eco assistance you still have region it will uh, adjust the region uh, according to the to the street or to the person in front of you like uh, corner had the same with auto region we get a look at the key it's a, just a normal volkswagen key with open close and only open the hood and i can see it 
The next thing is about the lights. We have a corning light. When dipped beam is switched on, a corning light is switched on when turning slowly or driving around very tight bends. And dynamic cornering lights, AFS. The dynamic cornering lights permits uh, optimum illumination of the road. The dynamic cornering light only works when the automatic headlight function is switched on and it speeds above 10 km an hour. Then we have auto high beam, same as in Kona. Main, be uh, main beam control automatically dips the headlights when oncoming vehicles uh, uh, or in vehicles driving in front are detected. And then of course there's advanced main beam control. This is when you have the matrix lights, it will just turn off segments so the, uh, the high beams are still on, but you do not blind the car that comes towards you. Then there's the coming home and leaving home function. So uh, when you are getting close to the car and it's dark and you have the, the lights on auto, it will turn on the lights so you can see everything where the car is. And when you get out of the car and it locks itself, it keeps the lights on and you can set the time in the options how long that should be. We have heated washer jets and headlight washer system. So uh, every few times when you wash your screen, uh, your windshield, and if you there's a, there's a special thing that you have to press, then it will wash the headlights. The internal mirror has two sensors in the front and the back for light, and it will uh, automatic anti dazzle interior mirror, so it don't get blind from the from the car behind you. Great function. The external mirror has a sync uh, adjustment function, so you can sync both a mirror so they do the same movement. You also have, uh, of, of course, folding when you park, and you have storing activating uh, for, for reversing if you want the, the right one to be on the bottom so you can see a curb or anything. On the climate page you can see that there's a normal climate settings but you also have smart climate where you have different functions like clears the windows of ice and condensation, directs wa warm air to the footwell, directs warm air to the steering wheel, directs cold air to enter the footwell, supplies fresh air to the vehicle interior from the outside, briefly increase the heating output, briefly increases the output of the cooling system. Then we have air care. The allergen filter in the air care climatronic can reduce the amounts of pollutants and also allergens that enter the vehicle interior. This is nice, huh? We also have automatic air res recirculation mode of climatronic. When automatic blah, blah, is switched on, no fresh air initially enters the vehicle interior. The air recirculation mode will switch on automatically if the system detects an increase in the concentration of nauseous you say that noxious substances in the outside air. Air regulation mode will switch off as soon as the level of those substances has returned to normal. The system cannot detect unpleasant odors. Something nice about the seat heaters. Every car I've been in, when you turn the car off, get out, get back in, seat heaters are off. Everything is back to standard setting. But here it says, if the ignition is turned on again within approximately 10 minutes, the most recent driver seat temperature settings is automatically activated. Nice! Of course with the ID3 you have normal stationary heating, so preheating, pre-cooling and stuff like this. We have, we have immediate air conditioning of stationary vehicles, so the ignition doesn't have to be on. And air conditioning of vehicle after unlocking. You can turn it on, so when you know you want your car cool, but you don't want to for some reason not pre-cool or whatever, when you when you unlock the car it will start the, the heating or cooling or whatever without you doing anything. But uh, stationary air conditioning switches off automatically after around 30 minutes if the immediate start function was activated. After around 50 minutes the vehicle drive system was not activated after program departure time. We then have four driving profiles, Eco, switch the vehicle into economical mode and helps you to drive the vehicle in energy saving manner. Comfort will be the normal one, Sport, I'm guessing to have more torque, in individual where you can uh, change some things and mix it all together if you want to. In the driving assist page we have the speed limit or adaptive cruise control that you can switch so it recognizes traffic signs and adjusts the speed according to those. We have the normal lane assist then other car had where you just when you go over the lane a line it will, it will pull you through and with travel assist this keeps you in the middle. 
With normal adaptive cruise control, when the car in front of you stops, you, the car stops as well, but if you want to restart again, you have to press res, uh, resume. It, when you have a travel assist, it will start automatically unless it's a, it's a very long time that you're standing. There's an auto lane change option in the uh, travel assist where it knows the cars in front of you is going slower than uh, what it was only on the highway of course slower than your preferred speed and then it will check if you can pass and then it will do it. We have the Park Assist Plus, where when you drive it recognizes parking spaces, you can select one and then it will park itself in the parking spot. And we have the whole rear traffic alert, this is what I said before with the sensors, you go out of this uh, parking spot and you can see if there's a car coming and it warns you. The manual talks about we upgrade, which is a function where you can have more features in the car that you have to buy, but it doesn't specify what features that will be. We of course have we connect in the car and we have two different versions. The normal version would be driving data, vehicle status, vehicle health report, parking position, service scheduling. And if you have we connect plus, then you get programming departure times, charging, air conditioning, Apple Music and Tidal and internet radio. What would you do with an app with that? I, I don't understand that right now. Charging stations, online map update, online route calculation, online point of interest search and online voice control, online traffic information, parking spaces, lock and unlock. And there's some more individual options here. You can, uh, I doubt that you have to pay to get the manual, but we experience, we park and app connect. App connect should be in there. There's an option to have the Wi-Fi hotspot in the car and you can connect eight mobile devices to your hotspot and the car connects to the internet and your mobile devices connect to the car. And of course you can do it the other way where you're connecting your phone is the is the hotspot and you connect with the car to the phone we have app connect which is of course where are we we have apple carplay android auto and mirror link and with apple carplay you even have have it wirelessly the manual tells us uh, about the infotainment system about the resolution 2080 by 720 pixels, a TFT display, 10 inches. And in the media mode of the infotainment system, we have video mode. The infotainment system display can play a video from a data medium, from internal memory or from a streaming service. The video audio, audio is relayed via the vehicle loudspeakers. And this is in interesting. The video image is displayed only when the vehicle is stationary. When the vehicle is in motion, the infotainment system display is switched off. The video audio can continue to be heard. Then there's the sound system explanation. When you have the basic equipment, you have three to five loudspeakers in different locations. Amplifier output is max of five to five times 20 watts. And these are your things that you can adjust. When you have the optional sound system, get this is the Beats uh, sound system. You have nine with different ratings and watts. You have a special amplifier and a subwoofer and you can of course do surround stuff and whatever. And this would be your uh, infotainment system, but we all know how it looks like. And on 14, it shows that it will have gesture control. Then two things that a few people of you won't like at all. Roof carrier. For technical reasons, the bodywork of the vehicle is not designed for fixing a roof carrier. No. And the same thing for towing a trailer. The vehicle is not approved for towing a trailer. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Then the manual shows us the charging information screen and there's a lot of info in there. I mean, you can go through this charging location, start end charging, reduce charging current, automatic release charging connector of the end, set the charge limit from 50 to 100 percent, set the lower charge limit if you charge at home and you will never want the battery to go uh, under 50 percent or something. You can select this and then, then it will charge, uh, start uh, charging. Then there's charging power, but not in kilowatt. It shows it in kilometers of range per minute or per hour, whatever you want to display, but there's no charging power. And as most EVs, there's a manual unlocking of a charge connector. It's in the trunk on the side. You just pull it if the charger doesn't give the, uh, the car doesn't uh, unlock by itself. 
And the last thing are the dimensions if you're interested in. Some people were uh, interested in the ground clearance. It's all here. Where is it? Ground clearance here. 150 millimeter, millimeters. Turning circle. 10.2 meters. Okay, that's it. Thank you much for watching. Have a great day and take care. Bye.